So what to do when approached by a police officer? It's a question some may not think about very often, but for African-American families nationwide and here in Central Texas, it's become a daily dinner table conversation. Channel 6 News reporter Imani Payne spoke to families having these conversations and learned why it's happening so frequently. Imani. Doug and Leslie, incidents of alleged police brutality against people of color sparked national controversy in recent years. More well-known cases involving Michael Brown or Eric Garner have some African-American families wondering how to best interact with police to avoid an escalating situation. In this story, I talk to families who explain their take on race relations and policing and learn why this talk is something they say is necessary for survival. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. Please don't tell me my boyfriend just went like that. It's a talk that's taken place for decades. Passed down from father to son, mother to daughter. Uh, when I hear the word police, it makes me think that my life may not be in my own hands. Not the one about the birds and the bees, a more serious talk taking place between African-American communities. Behind closed doors, the talk about how to act around police officers in hopes to make it home alive. Two words can describe what it feels to be a black man in 2017, justifiable homicide. Colleen resident Lonnie Farrow says he got the talk from his mother when he was just a boy. We're told at a very young age, when you interact with law enforcement, even if you are right, you know your constitutional rights, they don't mean anything when you interact with law enforcement. You are to comply with 100% of their request because the goal is for you to get home safely. And again, every time another issue of police brutality against people of color is raised. Before you move, you make sure that you have their full attention and they're aware of the movement that you're going to make. Sir, you would like my driver's license? Okay, my driver's license is in my right pocket. If you would like, officer, you can reach into my right pocket and retrieve it. I would prefer that. It's a talk he just had for the first time with his eight-year-old son, Lonnie Jr. You know, when he's 6'5", 220 pounds, facial hair, I don't know what other people are going to see him as. And that frustrates this father. I feel like I'm still a slave. I feel like slavery never ended. I feel like we didn't just have the first black president. It's a difficult dialogue fellow Colleen resident Tavares Betho and his son say is necessary. Making sure that I contact someone so that they can understand, okay, I'm, I'm being stopped by the police. All right, um, this is the situation just so that you can be advised that right now I'm entering into an interaction with the police. So that if you don't hear from me with inside of the next 15 to 35 minutes, then it may be necessary that you check for my well-being. But both families agree that they want things to change. So we took them straight to police headquarters where they met face to face with the people who patrol their neighborhoods and had a two hour long roundtable discussion about current race relations and policing nationwide. African American officer Kyle Moore says he became a cop to make a difference, but admits even he got the talk from his parents before picking up the badge. My mom, when she gave me the keys, I'm 18 years old driving down the highway on Highway 31, going through some of those back towns, my mom would tell me, hey, make sure you roll your windows up. If you do happen to get stopped, make sure you keep your hands on the steering wheel. At times, the conversation got very heated. Ultimately, we have that ability now. We have to utilize that. As both sides fought to explain their experience. When the police pulled me over, I am no longer a citizen. You know, red, white, and blue represents freedom until the police get behind you. You can ask any person of color. I don't want it to be like, okay, every situation is a life and death situation, but it is. It is. Life or death sometimes. Hmm. Um, I want to go home. He wants to go home. You want to go home. He wants to go home. But the discussion also proved to be a learning experience and created a safe space for positive, open dialogue. It ain't about me. It ain't about Reagan. It ain't about our school. It ain't about you. It's about us coming together so we can all have an understanding and move forward. How do we do that? By having open dialogue. Everyone involved says they don't want to be judged for their skin color or uniform, but rather be acknowledged as a human being. Something they've all agreed to try and set the example for in the community moving forward. 
Something else this group talked a lot about were solutions. They say programs like Shoot or Don't Shoot would help community members understand some of the split-second decision-making officers have to make while out in the field. The group also thinks a teen summit where younger kids can talk to officers on a regular basis could help nurture a positive relationship and cut down on misconceptions on both sides. Now to see much more of the dialogue between the Colleen officers and the two families, visit our website that's KCENTV.com. Doug and Leslie.